Having trouble finding a place in Canada? Why not settle for a chateau in France? One Canadian couple did. This is a big story hitting the news in Canada and even on the floor of the House of Parliament at question period, Pierre Polyev brought this story up of a Canadian couple who sold their place, traded up to get a chateau in France. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. We know that this that after eight years, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost of housing, which has doubled since he took office. It's gotten so crazy that the cost of a house in Ontario means that one couple sold their 2,000 square foot home in that province and was able to buy a 6,000 square foot castle on 37 acres of land in France. They now say they could never sell the castle and afford to move back to Canada. Why does it cost more to be a member of the middle class in Canada than to be an aristocrat in France? Uh, just absolutely insane. Now, you can actually find the story. It's it's not that hard uh, to find. This is a couple from a small town in, in Ontario, not even a big city in Ontario. Uh, they sold it and got this French chateau in exchange for it. From Fergus to France. It's the fairy tale version of finding a home. Except for this couple, it's a reality. We have certainly made a big change. Yep. Stephen and Sarah Cole lived in a four bedroom home in the quaint southern Ontario town. You know, I, it was definitely a large home for two people, but, you know, we like to entertain. Little did they know their space for entertaining was about to grow exponentially. The pair fell in love with France after visiting several times, but the dream of living there felt like exactly that until one property popped up after sifting through hundreds of listings. You know, eventually a chateau crosses your your uh, search and you discover that that's with, within the craziness of the Canadian market, it mm -hmm. becomes attainable. In 2021, they made the move to Saint-Germain-des-Prés in Dordogne, France. So the house in Fergus was 2,400 square feet. Right. And this one's north of 6,300. All of it on 37 acres of land. Yeah, it takes me six hours to mow. So how much does a <laughs> castle like theirs cost? Um, unfortunately, we're not going to talk specific numbers, but it was enough that we could do pretty much a sweet, a straight swap for the house in um, for the for the chateau. They're keeping it a royal secret, but there's no hiding how hard it would be to return to the Canadian housing market. Well, particularly where the market was at that time, if we sold the chateau now, we probably couldn't move back to Fergus. A sentiment echoed by realtor Sean Ramator. Unless you're looking at, you know, selling and moving to a rental unit or you're retiring or you are leaving the country for whatever reason, um, the longer you're out of home ownership and in that market, the more challenging it becomes to get back in. The because the prices of housing is just going exponentially high. It's actually starting to come down now. And this is where a lot of realtors are getting kind of scared in this. But yeah, if if we sold the Chateau now, we probably couldn't move back to Fergus, a small town. The couple says the highlights... Uh, that it highlights how out of reach the Canadian housing market is. It is it is absolutely insane. Now, the story has been picked up by CBC, a bunch of other publications, but this is this is this is where the real estate market is and, and how out of touch even some of the realtors are in the in the business. I mean, are they out of touch or are they just hopeful that they'll continue to make sales? Because here's a here's a report. Uh, as well for realtors in the marketplace. Our Alexandria Manthe heard from Valley Realtors about how the market is shaping up. If you're looking to buy a home or put yours on the market, it might be time to act fast. I always tell anybody to sell while you can, buy while you can. In a seller's situation, of course, they're going to get top dollar for their home. Interest rate. Uh, it's just so sad because, you know, realtors, th this is their business. They want to sell houses <laughs> and housing houses are slowing way down. House sales are slowing massively. In British Columbia, we're, we're seeing a massive uh, slowdown. And I, I know people that work in the industry and uh, well, things are ramping up for uh, for the people around selling things because there's a lot more 
sellers getting on the market, not a lot of buyers buying into it. But uh, this is the this is the report, and this is they want to they want to sell houses, so they're always going to give you an optimistic look on on the whole thing. Rates have increased by almost five percent over the past three years, and Aldish says she doesn't expect them to come down anytime soon. As a buyer, I always say you might as well buy now. If you've ever heard the analogy, marry the home, date the rate. Despite property values raising and high interest rates, realtors are still seeing an influx of people wanting to buy due to the housing shortage on the market. Almost like double, double the buyers versus what's for sale. The shortage has stayed consistent since the height of the pandemic. A lot of people have changed their, what they want to do with their life. A lot of people have become closer to family. A lot of elder people were moving back to be with grandkids. And then the same thing with new construction, the affordability of building new is, you know, high. Um, so on the flip side of that is also finding the workers to build the houses. So we just we keep feeling it from every which direction. With more local news, I this is actually quite true. There is a, a massive pressure on the housing market to make sure that <laughs> it stays high. And actually, the uh, the post, uh, sorry, the National Post uh, put out a, a short video to explain uh, what these pressures are and why why the the market is actually remaining high despite. Uh, all the pressures to to drop it down, including pressures from the uh, the Bank of Canada in raising interest rates to have a deflationary effect on the market. But there are other pressures that are actually there to to try to keep it high. Interest rates are climbing and the Canadian economy is heading into recession. Both of these factors historically cause real estate prices to go down. But real estate prices aren't going down, they're going up. That's why you're getting magazine covers like this or polls like this showing that most Canadians who don't currently own a home are now resigned to dying without ever doing so. And unfortunately, this is all by design. At the core of the Canadian housing crisis is a latticework of policies which have the effect of keeping supply tight while pouring cash into the market to bid up prices. The only new housing policies in the 2023 federal budget were all demand focused, making it easier to take out debt or just straight up handing people more money to throw at their down payment. You have banks extending the amortization dates on mortgages, allowing Canadians to take out even more debt. And then there's immigration. Canada is now adding an unprecedented 1 million more people a year without any plan whatsoever on where they're going to live. Yeah, that's going to worsen housing affordability. Absolutely going to worsen housing affordability, but this is where we're at in Canada. And uh, we have been seeing a lot more houses uh, maybe, you know, some some are coming down in price uh, ever so slightly, but we're seeing them sit on the market for much longer. And this is we saw pressure from uh, premiers all over Canada on the Bank of Canada to to not raise the interest rates any further. Uh, in the last round of, of updates, the Bank of Canada said, well, we're not we'll we'll just stay at the at the current rate of five percent. And this is obviously the the prime rate. So the rates you'll get for your mortgage are, are considerably higher. But uh, that being said, uh, we're going to find out in in a few days, actually, uh, what what they're going to do next. Are they going to raise the rates? Are they going to drop them? Uh, are they going to continue to hold them at 5%? My, my theory is that they're going to raise rates because they're going to need to. But all of this being said, the Liberal Party is still out to lunch. They don't even realize how bad the economy is in Canada. Now they say it's all about the inflation. Yes, inflation is hurting, but the reality check. Take a look at the interest rates around, uh, inflation rates around the world. I'm wondering if the leader of the Conservative Party can be more honest and straightforward uh, with Canadians in regards to the reality of the situation, comparison to other areas of the world. Canada is doing well. <laughs> Boy, does he ever need to get out of this place and talk to real people. <laughs> yeah. If he thinks Canada's doing well. Holy smokes. Maybe he hasn't been to the tent cities that have formed right across this country that never existed eight years ago, that were perfectly pristine and safe neighborhoods now overtaken by misery and pain from people who can no longer afford to pay their rent. Maybe he needs to go door to door and ask people 
what they're paying on their monthly mortgage payments. Maybe he needs to talk to the one in five households where they're skipping meals because they can't afford the food. Maybe he needs to go to the bread lines that, that, that go block after block, street after street, next to uh, food banks. Those kinds of bread lines we do not see outside of either the Great Depression or the Soviet Union, Mr. Speaker. If he thinks things are going well in Canada, he needs to get out and talk to the real people who are suffering from coast to coast. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, you're seeing it in the polls now with uh, the popularity of the Liberal Party uh, going way, way down. It seems that they're, they're, they're looking to ditch Justin Trudeau as well, and they're, they're being kind of pretty open about this at this point uh, shopping for a new leader of the uh, the Liberal Party Justin Trudeau not even showing up for uh, for question period in the House of, of Commons anymore it seems I will we'll see if he even shows up today but that's uh, <laughs> this is where we're at this is where we're at in Canada the uh, the economy and the housing market is so ridiculous that yeah if you if you're sitting on a piece of property right now you could probably sell it and get a mansion, a historical mansion in France uh, or in other parts of the world. I would, I would suggest uh, read the fine print if you do think uh, of moving into a, a big property like that in some of the parts of the world. Uh, there are historical uh, obligations that you have if you buy a piece of property like that. You may be getting, you might be biting off more than you can chew in a situation like that. I don't know what the specifics were for this couple. That moved to France in this uh, big uh, c- castle, essentially. Uh, but if you're if you're looking into doing something like this and you're sitting on a piece of property in Canada, uh, keep this in mind that if you get into a property like that, there may be some legal obligations for you to keep up historical maintenance, which could be quite quite costly, and that's something that you'll actually have to <laughs> pay into. So uh, that's uh, that's a little uh, heed, heed that warning if, uh, if that's what you're looking into. But leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about this story, this crazy story about the housing market in general. Uh, where are you sitting uh, in this housing market? Are you a renter or are you a homeowner? And if you're a homeowner, do you still owe a buttload of money with uh, interest rates the way they are? Do you own your house outright? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.